This week on The Gadget Show, we're rounding off 2013 with an almighty tech-filled party. There's a no-holds-barred paint-flinging fight. You can see every wrinkle on your bald little head. All in the name of testing upscaling Blu-ray players. I mean, the quality is impressive. Really impressive. Also, you'll see us tentatively tackle the latest high-stakes craze. Nice. Oh, let's get this room shaking. The Hollyoaks cast grooving with the gadgets that make the ultimate New Year's Eve bash. It is almost like the real thing. John's passionate praise of this year's finest releases. 2013 has been a monster year. Unbelievable. And Pollyanna channeling Marty McFly in a pack -a on water. I'm not quite feeling as cool as I thought I would. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the final Gadget Show of 2013. Yeah, it's a chance to look back at all the brilliant stuff we've had in the show this year. It is, but also a chance to look forward to some of the amazing technology that's going to dominate our lives in 2014. Mm, like 4K televisions, for example. Absolutely. Super High Depth is going to be massive news next year. The only problem is there's not much content available at the moment. No, but there are Blu-ray players capable of upscaling 1080p Full HD video to 4K. In 2013, 4K, or ultra-high definition as it's also become known, has been the word on every tech lover's lips. Manufacturers have tantalised us with sumptuous screens that boast four times as many pixels as current HD models. We're clearly witnessing a significant evolution in picture quality, don't you think? Absolutely. I am getting TV envy. I'm not sure I'm going to go home and watch my normal telly after this. The only snag is that currently there's virtually no 4K content available. However, there are now products appearing on the market, such as upscaling Blu-ray players that claim to boost the appearance of HD material so it can be enjoyed in glorious 4K. But do they work? Well, to find out, we first needed to film some 1080p HD footage that we could later attempt to upscale to 4K. So we bought all the paint our local hardware store had to offer. Slipped into something a little more, uh, CSI. Oh. All right, Rach, let's do this. And unleash the fury. No more, this is nice boiler suit. <laughs> Stop that! Recording the colourful antics of our frenetic paint party was the incredible Phantom Flex. A high-speed camera that shoots in full HD up to 100 times slower than the eye can see. It's a serious bit of kit for serious filming. Action! Well, sometimes. Are you OK? <laughs> Open <No>. your mouth! <laughs> wow, well, you really went to town. Once all the paint had slapped, slathered, <laughs> and soaked us through, our glorious 1080p HD footage was in the bag. We then headed back to the studio to test out three upscaling Blu-ray players. The Panasonic DMP BDT 330. The LG BP 730. And the Sony BDP S 790. To make our HD footage, which has a resolution of 1920 by 1080 pixels, appear like 4K footage, which possesses four times as many pixels, i.e. 3840 by 2160, the players have to essentially quadruple the content of each original pixel. But you see, they can't actually add any new information to the source footage. All they do is stretch the pixel content across the 4K screen, tricking you into believing it's upscaled. But we weren't fooled. Well, we're looking at the Panasonic first up on this incredible, huge 4K TV. It's clearly not a 4K image. Like, if I went into a shop and I saw that and was told this is the new 4K technology, I, I would know it wasn't. Same story for the LG. Certainly not 4K. It's not even in the ballpark no. of, the, of what you'd expect from a luscious, rich, clear, crisp 4K image. But the Sony offered a more detailed, vivid picture and it's actually really, really clear. But overall, we're really not sold on the concept of upscaling Blu-ray players. Well, there's no short route to the quantum leap in quality that is 4K, because upscaling, if this is it, isn't convincing.
information on the Blu-ray players we tested and all the other gadgets in tonight's show, head to our website, channel5.com forward slash gadget show. Also, while you're there, check out the result of our viewers' vote for the best gadget of 2013 and watch John's superb video countdown. And of course, be sure to follow us at The Gadget Show on Twitter and join the live debate using the hashtag The Gadget Show. Rachel, I have something really remarkable to show you. Go on then. OK, check it out. It's called the iBean iBeans are the first commercially available digital media players made from sea heart beans that grow in the Amazon rainforest. They hollow it out, uh, electronics is placed in there, and then, you see the control panel, this is really cool. Um, it's cemented in there with another renewable organic material, something called a vegetable celluloid. It's like a plant-based plastic. Right. And for me, what I find exciting about this is the dirty secret of all the electronics that we're big fans of in the West is that a lot of the materials that we use are not very good for the environment, but this is a, a genuine glimpse of something that maybe in the future could be used in even bigger electronics. Should we, I've got some headphones if you'd like yeah. to give it a I try. Mean, it's yeah. pretty impressive. That, I mean, they're so different, aren't they? They're different yeah. beams. I guess everyone's original. As you say, each one is unique, and I think that makes it quite precious. Oh, you've got it too loud in there. Oh, my gosh, I can hear it here. <laughs> so it works, <laughs> It's loud! Wow! There's the volume. We've got the volume. We found it. Wow! I've got some tribal beats. Yeah. I'll, I'll put some appropriate music on there. <laughs> Do you like it, though? Does it sound good? Yeah, it sounds really good. I mean, it's really loud. It scared the life out there of me. There we go. <laughs> I-bean. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Time for a break. But next up, Mr B eulogises about the gadgets that have graced our palms in 2013. No ifs or buts, no excuses. It took on Apple in the desirability stakes and beat them. And Rachel and I tentatively tackle a unique techie craze. I'm impressed. Ooh. Welcome back to the final gadget show of 2013. Oh, what a year it's been, Rach. Yeah. Hey, oh, it 2013 really has. was, it's got to be a vintage year for yeah. technology. Yeah, I don't think there could have been a better year for me to start on the gadget show. I yeah. mean, we've had Ultra HD tellies, we've had Google Glass, the rollout of 4G, not to mention all the stuff in the gaming world. I mean, it's been mental. It has been, it's been astonishing. Uh, in, in nine years on this show, I've not seen 12 months uh, with the amount of innovation we've seen. Absolutely. So for an overall look at all the gadgety greats we've had on the show over the year, here's Mr. Mr. John Bentley with his tech review of 2013. What a fabulous year we've had! We've seen old friends upgraded and said hello to a raft of new and groundbreaking tech. Gadgets have never been so plentiful and so exciting. And this is great news because it means gadgets aren't just for geeks. These days they're for everyone. And no piece of tech epitomises this more than the smartphone. This year, the Nokia Lumia 1020 impressed with its awesome 41 megapixel camera. Normally, with a digital zoom on a phone camera, when you zoom in, you lose lots of detail. But with this massive 41 megapixel sensor, you don't. And you don't have to have a huge, great optical zoom on the back of the phone. It's brilliant. Then there was the iPhone 5S with its trailblazing 64-bit architecture and biometric security. You can use your fingerprint, but you've got to register it first. OK, um, not with the police. With the... <laughs> okay, <don't be> real. <laughs> but for me, the standout phone of 2013 is this, the HTC One. It's arguably the world's first truly desirable Android phone. No ifs or buts, no excuses. It took on Apple in the desirability stakes and beat them. And what would smartphones be without apps? In 2013, we reviewed loads. Our celebrity testers had some great recommendations, like the Adidas MyCoach, which Commonwealth 400 meter champion and TV presenter Ewan Thomas absolutely loved. It's just so clear to use and it's completely free. And Janet Street Porter found the TomTom Tom app for the iPhone a cut above the rest. Good old Tim's. He's, no, he's not ruffled. One of the apps that I had most fun with this year was iTranslate. It's a translation app that on a good day at least can cope with some quite complex phrases. Do you have any regional specialities you could recommend? Avez-vous des spécialités régionales que vous pourriez recommander? Oui, nous avons par exemple du cassoulet. It's still not 100% reliable. Gosh, um, tension casserole. But you can usually figure out what it means. Now that sounds interesting. <laughs> 
cutting-edge tech and innovation continue to shape the development of computers in 2013. There are people who thought touchscreen laptops wouldn't make sense, but 2013 has proved that they do. And when, like with this Lenovo Yoga, the screen twists round so you can stand it up and use it to watch movies or twist it right round and use it as a tablet, they really do provide something new. For the domestic side of home life, the Dyson DC59 cordless hoovered up the opposition in our 2013 vacuums test. It delivers the goods and it's great to look at. This year, 3D TVs lost the limelight as a TV's connectivity, how smart it is, became the key driver in new set sales. And Ultra HD 4K TVs became the new must-have for the money-no-object buyer. The quality of the pictures is, of course, breathtaking, but when they were launched, many of the first 4K sets cost over £20,000. Fortunately, as ever, prices are tumbling, and in America, you can now buy a 4K TV for under $1,000. Expect prices to be heading that way here soon. With the popularity of camera phones and the competence of modern compacts, you might think DSLRs would be struggling, but you'd be wrong. 2013 was a bumper year. I took the very promising Canon EOS 700D into combat. Well, a reenactment of a battle from the English Civil War. And it was a triumph. Great to use and producing brilliant images. It's easily one of the best DSLRs of the year. Pedal power went through a renaissance over the last year. Electric bikes are on a roll. They're expecting to sell 600,000 this year in Europe alone. And the one that excited me the most was the Volts e-Trail. It has a lithium-ion battery that's six times more powerful than those in conventional electric bikes. And with an image that draws inspiration from motocross, it's a radical shift in e-bike design. You've got a top speed of 30 miles an hour, a range of 50 miles. You can do your downhill run then use the battery power to get back to the top of the hill again. Splendid! Arguably even more entertaining and certainly jam-packed full of tech is the self-balancing unicycle. Unlike a conventional unicycle, an average person can master it within an hour. And I can't finish without talking about gaming. 2013 has been a monster year. The biggest event in gaming has been the launch of the Xbox One and PS4. These two behemoths of the gaming world are in a colossal battle for supremacy in an industry worth over £50 billion worldwide. Both offer new and improved controllers, scintillating graphics and inventive interactive and second screen functionality. But on balance, we believe the PS4 just about wins the war as it's more powerful and indeed cheaper. So clearly 2013 has been a phenomenal year for gadgets. But who knows, 2014 could be even better. Jace, I've got something here that I think you're going to love. Ah! Oh. Have a look at that. Industrial strength webbing <laughs> with some kind of weird, sadistic carabiner. You know me so well. Oh, I do know you very oh, well. Oh, it ratches! That industrial strength webbing allows you to combine tightrope walking with trampolining. You want I, to have a go? I like the way you're talking. I would love to have a go. Should we whoosh off? Let's whoosh and roll. Let's do it. <laughs> Say hello to the cool and unique craze of slacklining. This physically demanding and technically challenging activity exploits the strength and flexibility of nylon webbing to allow tightrope trickery, aerial acrobatics and death-defying stunts. But getting started is altogether more down to earth. In fact, lots of stumbling and falling down to earth. <laughs> Maverick, a company based in Dorset, have taken all the separate bits of kit needed to slackline and put them all together in one pack. But buying it is one thing, mastering it is another. Now, the thing is, as Rachel and I are demonstrating, it's not particularly easy, 
But like any activity, the more you practice, the better you get until you're doing big springs and jumps and bounces and tricks in the air, which Rachel is about to do, weirdly enough. Try as I might, I continue to display the poise of a one-legged tripod. But Action Sports Bradbury... I don't feel too stupid. ..was slowly learning to tame the 50mm-wide tightrope. I'm impressed. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> It's got that essential ingredient that all urban sports have, you know, that you've just got to do it right. OK, I'm good, I'm good. You've got to just get that trick. And to show you what a little bit of practice can lead to, here's some more of that funky footage of the pros at work. How cool is that? Time for another break, but stay tuned to see Pollyanna at her sexiest and wet all over, thanks to a thrill ride with San Francisco's answer to Doc Brown. Welcome back. Now, it's time for us to locate Polly on another one of her thrill-seeking, gadget-laden adventures. The thing is, you say locate, I mean, I can locate her. She's definitely on the west coast of America, but whether she's actually there right now, that's a whole other complex question. What on earth are you talking about? What I mean is, she, she was there, and she yeah. will be there, but the, whether yeah. she's there right now, it, it's very hard to ascertain. Oh, look, just, just watch it, it'll all make sense. OK. San Francisco, famous for its Golden Gate Bridge, Alcatraz and trams. It's also famous for its sports. In fact, that over there is the home of the San Francisco Giants, a major league baseball team. But I hadn't come for any of that. I was in San Fran to see a vehicle best known for its role in one of the greatest movies of all time. Unbelievable. Back to the future. This is the DeLorean hovercraft. Inspired by the car Michael J. Fox drove in the trilogy of blockbuster films, this amphibious vehicle takes you on a nostalgic journey back in time. Its creator, Matt Reese, is not an eccentric scientist, but a film buff and philosophy graduate. And like Doc Brown in the movie, Matt has also created his vehicle in true madcap fashion. It's sort of like a big surfboard. It's uh, styrofoam wrapped in fiberglass, with metallic paint all over. There's some, some wood and aluminum in the support structural areas. So how much does it weigh? It's about 500 pounds. The original DeLorean DMC-12 was driven by a V6 engine, but in order to power his replica time machine, Matt had to raid the garden shed. I love the fact that you have a lawnmower engine to yeah. lift this off yeah. the ground because it's that lightweight. There are two engines on the machine. The one at the front, which actually gives us its lift, is a six horsepower lawnmower engine, which will lift it about six to eight inches off the water. The one at the back, that was about a 23 horsepower engine attached to a 36 inch propeller. And that'll give it thrust. Uh, it goes about 30 miles an hour. Matt's amphibious DeLorean is pretty impressive, but with no formal training, how did he manage to create such an accurate replica? Basically, I found this one image online of a DeLorean that's sort of as a schematic. So I could use that and just blow up the scale and then, and then try to measure it from there. But I wasn't here to admire Matt's design skills. Time to see how this machine performs. So I decided to pull out all the stops with my get-up. I was going to get soaked, and the purple marigolds may not have been chic, but they would definitely be needed. I'm not quite feeling as cool as I thought I would. <laughs> it's going to feel a lot less cool when salt water is spraying in your face. And Matt wasn't wrong about that. As we picked up speed, it was like driving through a never-ending waterfall. What I love about the hovercraft is it is nostalgia. It takes me back to being a kid because, let's face it, the DeLorean is one of the most iconic movie cars that has ever been. And amazingly, Matt had agreed to let me pilot his pride and joy. It's just full throttle or nothing. OK. Uh, I just right. couldn't wait to get going. Engines on. In true poly fashion, as soon as I took to the wheel, the engine wouldn't start. Do we need another flux capacitor? Yeah, yeah. Since we weren't going to get a jump start in the middle of the bay, Matt had to resort to some good old pulling power to try and get us moving. <laughs> we were never going to get to 88 miles per hour like this. I have no idea what's happening. But finally, Matt brought out the big guns, some WD-40. 
I could pretend to be as cool as Marty McFly. Once I took the wheel, it was fairly tricky to control, but I know that because hovercraft don't necessarily have that much control. And you have even less control when the steering wheel comes off. But Matt soon fixed that. What surprised me the most is how slow it is when you're at the wheel. I almost had my foot to the floor as far as it would go, and it didn't really feel like it was doing anything. So, uh, if you want to get over hump speed, just yeah. point it in one direction and go for like 15 seconds, and it should be able to pick oh, up speed. Okay, cool. He kept mentioning like this hump, you have to get over the hump, which is like this void we're creating underneath the hovercraft that we need to get over and then we plane. I almost felt like I never really got over the hump. But you know what? The whole idea, the whole concept is very cool and I think Matt deserves a pat on the back for coming up with that idea. I'm just happy that I sat in the seat bobbing in the DeLorean. Hey, Hi, Polly. Polly. Hi, guys. So I can't believe it's been 23 years since the last Back to the Future film, but the DeLorean's still as iconic as ever. Absolutely. What was it like to ride? Oh, I will say, performance-wise, a little underwhelming, but it is uber cool. I was sat in the DeLorean. So, come <laughs> on, it's, it's the car from Back to the Future. Where did you go? Well, we kind of just maybe went about um, half a mile around San Francisco Bay. What do I look like in the future? That's what I'm trying to get to. <laughs> Ah, see, that would be telling Jace. I am not going to reveal anything about the future because I don't want to change it. Oh, that's a bit of a letdown. All right, score then, please. I'm going to give it 62%. 62%? Not that high as scores go. No. Let's see how that stacks up. I'm disappointed, if it's I'm honest. It's a bit rubbish. It looks so cool. It looks amazing. It failed to deliver. Yeah. Right, moving away from the slightly disappointing 80s car, it might not have escaped your attention that we have a brand new year around the corner. Yes, and of course, New Year is traditionally about, you know, some sombre reflection on a, yeah. a year gone, and possibly, you know, writing down some well-intentioned New Year's resolutions. Boring. But it's also about having a stonking great big house party. Absolutely. I'm glad you segued into the party. And that, of course, means new music, new lights, new New games, basically new cool party tech. Yes, but you've got to be cool. You've got to have a great party. How do you do that and you know not end up on your own shifting fridge magnets around in the kitchen? Well, you check out our guide to party tech. Yeah, and obviously Jason isn't anywhere near cool enough to do the reviews for us, so we've got some impossibly young and talented people, the cast of Hollyoaks, to do his job for him. Yeah, they're young. Talented. You're, you're too old. You know. A bit sad. Okay. This is College Coffee, usually the social hub for the sexy young folk on top telly soap, Hollyoaks. But for one night only, Come on in, everyone. Come on, it's the setting for a little gadgety get-together, hosted by two of Hollyoaks' very own stars. Jessica Fox, who plays Nancy Osborne, is a self-confessed gadget freak. I love gadgets, I love technology, and I'm also a bit of a geek. And Italian stallion Fabrizio Santino, a.k.a. Ziggy Roscoe, who's fond of a good old rave-up. A lot of party going on in Hollyoaks. We do like we a party. We like to party. <laughs> <laughs> to get the party started, Fabrizio kicked things off with some music tech. He had his hands on the Sonos Play 1, the latest and littlest addition to the Sonos music streaming family. It's slick, sharp, it's elegant. Looks like a real cool brand. The speaker connects wirelessly to your router via a compatible bridge, allowing you to stream your party tunes from a computer or network drive via the Sonos app. Let's get this room shaking. If you've got, like, you know, your iTunes set up or your Spotify, you can just bring it through the box and bang, it just plays the music. Hey, Jess, can you hear it over there? Yeah, I can hear it here. Sounds great. Despite its diminutive size, the Play One packs in two amplifiers, promising a wide, rich sound. The sound quality from such a small Phenomenal. speaker is just brilliant. It can also be paired with other speakers in the Sonos range, either to create a stereo pair or to stream music to different rooms. I can choose something that I want to listen to and change it. He can listen to something else over there. What do you think, Bab? Think we should get one for the green room? Yes, please. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Music sorted. How about the lighting? The Philips Hue range of smart lighting has a new addition. 
two metre long light strips which can be cut to size and adhere to any solid surface. Up to 50 different lights in the range can be controlled from the Philips Hue app. So I'm going to pick an ambience. Sunset, I quite like that. Let's change colour. Very clever. And third party apps like Hue Disco promise some fun extra features too. Hold it up to the speakers. And it will pulse in time to the music. Syncing it up to the music didn't work as well as I would have liked. Um, I think maybe you need to play with the levels a bit more. Strobe. A bit more impressive now. I think everyone would, would love to have something like this in their house. In your toilet, maybe. <laughs> what? If you're having a bath, you know, atmospheric lights, why not? The only thing I will say about it is it is pretty darn expensive. Ah. And the beat kept going, courtesy of the sound responsive display of the Aeon Party Rocker and the USB dancing water speakers. You can't really take your eyes off them, can you? It kind of makes me delu a little bit. <laughs> But, of course, every good party needs some party games. You ready? I think so. Just Dance 2014 <laughs> is the newest instalment of the gyration-inducing dance game, updated for next-generation consoles. Just Dance seems to update quite regularly with the up-to-date songs and new choreography, and I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> this version lets you film the action and share your videos. Look, you can see it on the screen. Look, there you go. And there are some sneaky new uses for the Wii U's gamepad, too. There you go. Oh, God. <laughs> you can now be like the dance master and you can control what the other person's doing. It's like Mr. Bean, isn't it? I also really enjoyed watching you play on it. <laughs> I'm just a great dancer, that's You fine. are. It's just fun. Thing. It's just a lot, a lot of fun. <laughs> for the slightly less energetic, there was some innovative entertainment on hand, too. The Lenovo Idea Center Horizon is an all-in-one desktop PC with a difference, a touchscreen display that's designed for portability. It's like having a PC, but a flat screen PC. It's wireless, you can bring it around to your friends' houses and, and play your games, and that would be you know, quite a cool thing to have. And you can stand it up. It's kind of like a big TV as well, and yeah. with streaming, as that gets more popular, this will come into its own. Absolutely. The Lenovo comes preloaded with a variety of games and some bespoke gaming accessories. It is almost like the real thing. Yeah, it is actually. But would it make an appearance at a Hollyoaks party? I don't know how good it is for a party. I imagine it to be more of a personal use kind of thing. You know, unless it was a sensible party with no alcohol, it is quite a delicate piece of equipment. Good game, well done. Thanks. Finally, any party worth its salt needs photographic evidence. Smile. And Jessica was snapping away on a rather unusual party camera. The Ricoh Theta 360 has two built-in conical lenses, enabling you to take full 360-degree panoramic pictures, which can be synced with your smartphone. Here we go. And you can uh, scroll out, scroll in, and see everybody. I like the fact that it's wireless and you can set it up on its tripod. I love the idea of putting it on top of some amazing landscape and getting a... 360 yeah. degree. And this thing will hold like 1,200 photos, which is pretty impressive. It's quite weird, isn't Full it? Full panoramas can then be posted on social networks and shared with the world, <laughs> though only through the Theta website. What do you think of the picture quality? I'm a little bit disappointed. Not so sure. The resolution isn't as clear as I thought it'd be. But it might have been better if we were outside. There are cameras. You can take panoramic shots with a better resolution, do you know what I mean? You so can, but you won't get the 360. No, so I think it's got something there, and I, I love where it's going. I just don't think this thing's quite there yet. Mm. So, with the party drawing to a close, which tech had impressed their guests the most? I like the Sonos speakers. I'd have them at a party because they fill the room with sound. Speakers. Yeah. Yeah. I like the lights as well. I think they're pretty cool. But did our party-loving soap stars agree? I love the son of speakers, I think they are brilliant. You can create such great atmospheres with different rooms, have different vibes, have brilliant sound quality, and I don't think they're overpriced. Definitely. For such a small box, you get a big sound that can fill the room up and you can have a right good party as if there was a DJ in the house. I can almost drown him out. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, 
Now, there's one way of celebrating New Year that's better than what you've just seen, and that is the Gadget Show competition. Absolutely. Can you imagine starting 2014 with your house crammed to the ceiling full oh. of the latest and best tech you can possibly get your hands on? Well, I tell you what, Lindsay can remember that because we rang her from this very studio during the show. Yeah, I mean, she thought it was a wind-up. She knows it's true now, don't you, Lindsay? It certainly was the real deal, but guess what? What? This little phone in my hand is also the real deal. There's another number programmed into here with another winner's number details. Oh, brilliant. Can I make the call this time, please? Yes, I think you should. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. OK. Oh, this is going to be fun. OK. Can you imagine being called and not picking up? Oh, it's ringing. That's a good start. Hello. Hello. Have you ever entered the world-famous gadget show competition? Uh, I have, yes. Today is your lucky day. Because we are filming the programme right now and we wanted to call to tell you they've actually won the Gadget Show competition. You've won it, dude! <laughs> no way. You yes won way! It! Yes way indeed, Inus. It's Rachel and Jason. We just wanted to ring to say congratulations! What is your name, Lucky Gadget Show competition winner? Oh, Dan. Dan. Well done, Danny boy. And oh, I should explain that you could be like Danny too and get a call from us or one of the Gadget Show team as a competition winner. You could win a 55-inch 3D TV with four pairs of 3D glasses, a wireless keyboard and wall mount, a 47-inch smart 3D TV, a 22-inch TV, a BTEC TV stand, a Hopage MyTV Freeview tuner and a Sonus wireless music system. A Sky Plus HD box from Sky's top package free for a year, a UView box, a 3D Blu-ray home cinema system, a Sony BDP S790 Blu-ray player from today's test and 10 Blu-ray films, an Apple TV, Chimera Wand remote control and a monster cable set. A PlayStation 4 and camera, an Xbox One, a Nintendo Wii U and a 3DS XL. A Sony PS Vita, a Turtle Beach gaming headset, an Ouya, a game stick, an Nvidia Shield and games for all the consoles. An HD gaming recorder, a Canon EOS 700D DSLR camera, a Panasonic TZ40 compact digital camera, a Siwi photo book voucher, an iPhone 5S, an LG G2 Android smartphone and a Huawei Ascend G510 smartphone. An HP Envy all-in-one printer, Adobe Photoshop Elements 11, a Kobo Aura HD e-reader, a Tesco Huddle, a 16 gig Google Nexus 7, an Android Sony Xperia Tablet Z, an Apple iPad Air with leather smart cover, wireless keyboard and glass stand. A Samsung Galaxy Gear smartwatch, Tractor DJ for iPad, a Bose SoundLink Bluetooth speaker, a JBL Pulse speaker, a Yamaha outdoor speaker and a Logitech UE smart radio. A Sony in-car audio system, a pure twilight alarm, an AlcoSense Elite breathalyzer, an ILA wedge door alarm and a 13-inch MacBook Air. A MyCoach Bluetooth heart rate monitor, a TomTom Tom mobile app and TomTom Tom runner watch, a Garmin UV sat-nav, Virgin's top speed broadband free for a year if available in your area and Kaspersky Universal Security. A works cordless lawnmower, a Karcher window vac, a Dyson Animal DC59 wireless vacuum, a DeLonghi Black Magnifica coffee maker, kettle and four slice toaster. A Samsung smart oven, a Tefal OptiGrill, Withings wireless smart scales, a Philips Hue lighting pack, a G-Pause pet tracker and an iTranslate app. A limited edition scale electric set, a Penny Original Cruiser skateboard and a pair of Protec double down elbow pads. A Sony waterproof MP3 player, an XEZ Rider MP3 player, an iPod shuffle and an Apple iTunes voucher. Parrot Zik wireless headphones, Sennheiser MM70S headphones, a TDK A360 Bluetooth speaker, a Mophie juice pack, and a Buffalo 1TB storage device. A 12-month subscription to Netflix, a 12-month premium membership to Spotify, a Combat Creatures Attack Nid, a Tamiya RC car, a Tech Air backpack, an Airhogs RC toy, and a Carrera RC chopper. An Oral-B Trizone 5000 toothbrush, a Bean toothbrush, a Samsung smart camera, a Big Shot camera, and a Color Lab iPhone gift voucher and Oloclip camera. A Nike Plus Fuel Band SE, a TDK A33 rugged speaker, a Western Digital portable hard drive, a Vata torch and battery bundle, and a pair of Sportiva Trango walking boots. A Ribble road bike, a Garmin Edge 510 cycle computer, a Brighton Rider 60 cycle sat nav, a Nike sports watch with GPS, and a GoPro Hero 3 Plus Black Edition. A Leap Motion, a Lenovo Yoga Tablet, a Media Devil Stylus Pen, a PowerDock 5 Charging Station, a Fuji Memory Card Bundle, and a Cuddly Techie Toy. It's a truly phenomenal haul of gadgety goodness that will make your family, friends and neighbours green with envy if you win. So do not dilly-dally, as entering is simple. 
All you have to do is text Gadget to our brand new number 66155 or call 0906 500 5000 or post your name and contact telephone number 2 The Gadget Show 1812 PO Box 7557 Derby DE1 0NP Text costs £2 plus one message at standard network rates. Calls cost no more than £2 from a BT landline. Calls from other networks may vary and for mobiles will cost considerably more. Lines close at midday on the date shown on screen and three days later for postal entries. For rules, go to channel5.com forward slash win and we'll repeat this information again at the end of the show. It's final break time, but don't go anywhere, as next we dust off our old VCRs, grab some bread, and feed the 5,000. <laughs> there was a moment there I thought you were going to vom. Welcome back. Now, once upon a time in the days when there was no TV at night and only a couple of channels to choose from, there was one great tech invention that changed all that forever. It's incredible if you take your mind back, you know, to when it was like that. The VCR, the video cassette recorder, was a revelation. I remember we got one and all the neighbours came around. It was like a bit witchcraft. It revolutionised uh, viewing. Nice little history lesson there, Jay. Thank you very much. But now, in the days of smart TVs and PVRs, those clunky old machines are kind of just picking up dust in people's attics. They are. In fact, there's a whole generation of gadget show viewers that probably don't if you know what I'm talking about, but you're about to see that um, because we will give the VCR a new lease of life. We're going to make it feed the peckish. Yeah, it sounds are. bizarre, but it'll all make sense if you follow us down to our laboratoire d'invention, aka downstairs. Come on, let's go. Allez, tu dois. Okay. So, here you go. One VCR. One cheap toaster. Nice. Put them together and you get the ultimate in recycling, the VCR toaster. And first up, you break them into their constituent parts. Literally. All I need to do is take out these gubbins to make room for the insides of that toaster. It wasn't long before Jason came over all nostalgic. It's quite beautiful, really, this, because there's a mechanical thing going on here that is logical, makes sense to us, whereas nowadays, with the miniaturised versions of these that are at the centre of all of our gadgets. Absolutely. We've lost the physical relationship we used to have with technology. But there's no place for it in today's world. We don't ah. need VHSs. But there is, isn't there? Hey, okay. The breakfast table. So the toaster we're using is a double sliced toaster, but we can only actually fit one hole in our VCR machine. So we're going to have to turn the heating element off the bottom half and squish it all together so it fits in nicely. I used some heavy-duty cutters to remove one of the toaster's heating slots, while Jace delicately removed the VCR's innards. <clears throat> then we worked on installing its new bread-crisping heart. So I've bent the front grill round so this should look all neat and tidy. Nice. OK, so basically here is the power button here, which I've sliced off, and I've stuck it onto a piece of wood. And on that, literally, all that does is it's a plunger, and it pushes the little loader that loads the toast in and turns on the toaster. Next, we had to extend the cable for the toaster's eject button into the VCR's front panel. So we're turning this stop eject button here into the cancel button on the toaster, so we've just got a wire connecting this button to what would be the eject button on the toaster anyway. We've just got to solder them in place and that's as easy as it is. With the connections complete, our VCR toaster was now ready. What do you think? Are we there? I think we're there. Just stick the lid on, a couple of screws, and we're giving this old VCR machine a new lease of life. Oh, look at that. It can make people happy. I think we, I th and I think I know just the place to test this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Before we go, though, remind me to adjust the tracking, yeah? Right. Adjust the tracking. Yeah. I remember. It was time to introduce our radical invention to the world. We headed to Birmingham Moor Street train station to feed some hungry commuters and get their verdict on this life-enhancing gadget. Toast, anyone? VCR toast? No. How do you like it, sir? Beat a Max or VHS? <laughs> Come on, you with the hair about your ears. Come and do it. And you come. You I love your hair. No. VHS. Huh? It was like, you know DVDs? This is what happened before. Yeah, cool. As a man of the 80s, what do you think about this concept? I think it's brilliant, yeah. Jeez. Our commuters were genuinely impressed, but there was a slight design flaw. Mind your finger, you're, you're going to burn yourself no, if you're it, like Kevin. Uh, it doesn't work unless I keep my finger on it. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Everything's fine, everything's fine. 
toasters are designed to heat bread up to 310 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a tad warmer than you get with a VCR. It smells toasty. It smells like progress, doesn't it? Are you ready now? Ready? Right? Yep. Seriously? Where's this one? Oh my god. Stop the jet. Stop the jet. Stop the jet. Unplug it. Unplug it. Unplug it. <laughs> Run. Ah! Save yourselves. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, okay, just pretend that that didn't happen. That didn't happen. Oh. Don't, don't show them that it's only done one side. Oh, it's perfect. Look at that. It's absolutely perfect. Look at that. It's not burnt at all. Look. It's absolutely beautiful and golden. Just how a piece of toast should be. Done. Perfect. Once again, it's not even slightly burnt. Toast from a VCR, you see what we're doing here? Little chocolate in the brownies. <laughs> well, they chuck me out of being a man. Remember this? Yes. Well, the one side's lovely, the other side I'm not too sure. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good toast. Thank you so much. Cheers. Go and be awesome, go and be young. <laughs> <laughs> there was a moment there I thought you were going to vom, but that, no, but that was just, that was, a, that was you. Wait, ready? This is for someone with a B in their name. Could that be you, my dad? That is, yeah. Oh, hey. It's good. What does it taste like? Jam. Jam. Plastic. Get the... Jam and plastic. <laughs> so that's alright, actually. Yeah. Jesus, something's going on. It's Turn it off. The whole thing's melting it's down. It's melting. Oh my god, look, the toaster's oh, melt. The... Oh. oh no. Oh, okay. That's not a good look. I think we need to end this production, actually. No, seriously, you know what we need to do, Rach? Take this bit off. No, seriously, seriously, you know what we need to do? In a situation like this where there are health and safety implications, there's only one thing that we should do. Run. Leave it. Run. I'm with you. Jason, you seem to really like this build. If you want to pilfer it, I'm not going to stand in your way. I, I think I may take this home to Bradbury Towers. You're welcome. I, I, I mean, because, because apart from, you know, some minor cosmetic damage, it works brilliantly. Yeah, it was a great build. And if you want to see any of our other builds over the past year, go to Demand 5. They're yeah. all up there. Rachel's got a good idea for a build. Go on. Yeah. An old monitor into a fondue set. You see, that's a winner, eh? I've got one pager into an electric shaver. <laughs> Brilliant. We just can't stop. Loads <laughs> of great ideas. Anyway, that's all we've got time for. Thanks for joining us. Uh, have a great new year. See you in 2014. We'll see you then. Next week's Gadget Show is our series finale, and it's a real corker. John and Rachel look to the future of smartwatches by talking to their wrists a lot. Aha, my wrist is vibrating. Hi, John. Send. Text John. Pollyanna heads to Big Bear Lake in California to tame a gnarly off-road electric bike. This thing does absolutely fly. <laughs> Speed demon Susie Wolf test drives the quirky in-car tech out right now. And we built a supercharged automatic snowball slinging cannon. Yeah, I got the cameraman! All that next time. But right now, don't forget to enter this week's sensational gadget show competition to win with a chance of winning a mind-blowing mound of techie prizes. To enter, all you have to do is text GADGET to our brand new number 66155 or call 0906 500 5000. Or post your name and contact telephone number to the GADGET Show 1812, PO Box 7557, Derby DE10 NP. Text costs £2 plus one message at standard network rates. Calls cost no more than £2 from a BT landline. Calls from other networks may vary and for mobiles will cost considerably more. Lines close at midday on the date shown on screen and three days later for postal entries. For rules, go to channel5.com forward slash win. Goodbye and good luck. And just to remind you, please do not try any of the Gadget Show stunts at home. Well, Greenland better watch out. Our little Geordie's out to rename it Robson Greenland. That's if he can win the Extreme Fishing Challenge. Stay right where you are. He's kicking off his new series here on Channel 5 next.